Honorable member for Mazabuka Central. Mr. Speaker, um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Speaker, am I audible this time? Yes, you are audible. Go ahead. Okay, I appreciate um, the opportunity. Uh, I would like to thank the committee for bringing out uh, this report. And uh, my own view is that um, the government has uh, a, a, a duty to perform in terms of what they will do uh, to action what the committee is saying. Remember, Mr. Speaker, the committee system has always been the heart and soul of any parliament. And um, there is something this report is seeking to achieve. And the one thing that came out very clearly uh, was that the committee has lamented about the delay in bringing forward the information, access to information bill, which has been gathering dust for a very, very long time under this government. The government must come clear when they intend to bring this bill, considering that they only have a few weeks to remain uh, before we go to seek another mandate from the Zambian people. There is an explanation that the minister must give why the information, access to information bill has taken this long to bring out. Remember, sir, they say that um, when the state is wrong, it becomes very dangerous to be right. The report is also seeking to address the laws, the existing laws that may circumvent or prohibit the, the uh, leverage on investigative journalism. They talk about fear. Uh, the report speaks about fear. That is a matter that requires to be cured. Why is it that the journalists are scared? What are they scared of? Has it been the, the, that way ever since Adam and Eve? I think the answer is no. We need to address this report and uh, stop, uh, you know, uh, glossing over the very salient points that it brings out. The government requires to provide a platform for investigative journalism to flourish. Because an uninformed nation is also a very dangerous nation. This whole matter lies in enlightening society so that they can understand what is going on around them. I will give you an example, Mr. Speaker, of one story, or maybe two, that uh, are an example, a clear example of investigative journalism. One, there was the issue of uh, redeveloping the Kangalui mine in the Lower Zambezi. We all are aware that the public rose, they did not want that invest, uh, investment to restart. And so some journalists took it upon themselves to go in and find out the nitty gritty of the pros and cons of reestablishing this particular mine and the effects that it would have on the, uh, the, the, the flora and fauna and also the devastating effects on, on, on nature. That is a typical example of investigative journalism. As against what I'm hearing now from colleagues who are talking about, you know, libel, scandalizing people on social media, this report is not about social media. It is not about uh, the, the Zambian watchdog. It is not about the, the, the Zambia intelligence news. It's not about smart eagles. It's about investigative journalism where somebody dedicates themselves to a developing story, which they will unfold in stages in order for society to know. The next example that I will give, Mr. Speaker, is the issue of the devastation that has happened in the area where, in the Lusaka East, in Forest 27. The news diggers dedicated themselves to this story until government started uh, jittering around, getting a bit nervous, calling news diggers' names, because they went in and demonstrated that there was a certain amount of impunity on part of government where government officials only, and to be specific, 
some from a particular um, uh, political party, PF, where they went to lands and collected records of people who had benefited from that particular uh, uh, treasured uh, forest 27. That is an example of journalism that is investigative. And so the report is seeking for this to be given a platform to exist and exist peacefully. I thank you, sir.